Now I'm going to tackle the leakage calibration. There are two methods of doing this. One is calibration with no milliammeter and the other one of course is calibration with the milliammeter. And I'm going to take the easy route and do it without the milliammeter. So for this I got to take a 100 kilo ohm resistor and then connect this across the test terminals. So, and then thereafter I have to turn the voltage to up to 300 and of course this bridge here the bridge discharge leakage switch has to be of course in the leakage position and here on the left the we're going to do first the electrolytic as the type okay and what I do is I adjust the eye tube to the just close position with the top calibrate control and that would be right here this is the top calibrate control so let me attempt that to just close position just using a little um, non-metallic screwdriver so if I do slip or something okay here we go I thought there was nothing happening so they just close position that might be like right around there I guess so that was that and now I go to the next calibration which I would have to do next I'm just reading off the manual now I have to move the bridge liquid switch to discharge and remove the 100 kilo ohm resistor and then I connect a 1.5 mega ohm resistor across the test terminals for the next step okay let me get everything set up so I've got everything set up I didn't have a 1.5 mega ohm resistor but I managed to put some in series and I came out to like 1.52 mega ohms that's close enough for me I won't tell if you won't and next I have to turn down the voltage here down to 25 volts 25 volts and then put this in the mini or minlytic position the leakage the leakage discharge bridge switch in the leakage position and then I have to adjust the bottom control in the back or three or three of them behind here I just did the top one earlier did the bottom one has to be again the I2 just closed okay back at it my screwdriver again I mean you can use any screwdriver if you want even a metal one I just like using them here because like I said I don't I have slipped before and shorted something out it wasn't pretty Well, it looks like there's nothing happening. Oh, well, I'm adjusting wrong control. I had adjusted the middle one, not the bottom one. Now something should be happening. Okay, here we go. For the second adjustment, again, it's the bottom control, not the middle one. Your mind tells you to work from the top on down, but it's not that. You go from the top to the bottom and back to the middle. So, that looks like it's just closed. And then the last thing I have to do is set the control to the 3-volt position. Let's see. 
lowest position type of paper here it's on leakage still and now I adjust the center control to the just close position Okay, let me do this again. Just close position. Kind of hard getting it on there. Okay, I guess that's just close. And that concludes the calibration. So to conclude this video, I might replace some of these capacitors down the road. But I don't think it's that pressing for me right now if I ever run into them I'm not going to go ahead and special order them somebody had already replaced the electrolytics for me which was which I was fine with that uh, I guess the person that I actually got it from the person that sold me this unit which I got off of eBay actually told me this unit was like in brand new condition which well it I guess one could argue about that um, of course when you get one of these units you have to make sure the eye tube is working that's for sure or basically to make sure all the tubes are working and the problem I had with the one tube I had um, I guess the the tube socket contacts they were oxidized and I had to do a spray contact uh, spray in there in order to get the the tube to light up also the a lot of resistors are going to be off value and as a general rule I decided to replace those that were around 20 percent or more out of tolerance also what's really important one last thing with this all of these switches here have a whole bunch of contacts in here and the slightest bit of crud on here like mine were like with they were had black crud on will make you will let you have erratic readings and this thing won't work right which I had it's not shown here on camera because I never had the camera turned on when I was playing around with playing around with the unit I had a problem with that where it wasn't reading right and all the ranges and what I did is I had I think it was in the bridge mode and I judiciously cleaned everything twice in fact there's there's a couple of uh, switches with with these contacts on there it has to be they have to be cleaned really good really well best to clean them twice uh, that's probably the major single headache issue that you're gonna run across I didn't really find any bad soldering or solder joints I don't think my soldering looks better so I'm not gonna uh, attempt to compete in the world soldering championships this year and here this switch was the same way here the voltage dropper switch and back here here too you can see my finger and here there's contacts here I think they were on in between there that has to be cleaned really good too and I think that about sums this unit up I don't really know what I'll be using it for I guess with this unit having a combination regular capacitance meter having the ESR meter and using this thing to check leakage I guess when this thing came out it came out in the tube era you know where the voltages were a lot higher back then and things got a lot hotter so I guess it makes sense to have it but it didn't cost me too much so I think I'm probably gonna hold on to it for now and hopefully I'll be using it just a tiny little bit Again, like I said, the resist the resistors here, the precision resistors, they all checked out okay. I don't know if I mentioned that in one of the earlier video sequences. And also the the precision capacitors, I'm gonna keep them in there for now. And now the only thing I checked this for was on my regular capacitance meter and it was inspected. I didn't check it for leakage or anything. But as soon as I do run across these things, 
I'm not going to special order anything, then I'll go ahead and swap them out too. Basically, at the moment, the whole unit is working fine, and uh, that I guess that concludes this video. And also, these things here have to be uh, sprayed, sprayed too. Basically, everything's got to be every, anything that moves, even the uh, the switches in the front, like the internal, external switches here on the other side. Everything's got to be uh, sprayed. So that's it, I think, for now.